Good morning, everybody. So it is a pleasure to be talking to you today, still on lockdown, not, not quite lockdown, but uh, still within a COVID environment. And uh, it's a great pleasure for me today so uh, to bring to you a uh, very interesting um, personality within the industry. So you all know me by now, I'm hoping. So I am Tony Tio, the founder and CEO of Renewables in Africa, your Africa clean energy champion. And today we want to be talking about training people, delivering skills to Africans so that they can acquire what they need to go and make the, uh, the shift into their industry. So I have with, with me, Mr. Nevation uh, Gavinda. So the COO of Safia Nevation. Great to have you today. Thank you, Tony. Thank you for having me. Excellent. So we're going to be talking about uh, digital training, as I, as I mentioned. But first, just to give justice to yourself and also the fantastic organization that you are representing, I was wondering whether you could both introduce you and Safia, please. Good. Thank you, Tony. Uh, as you've introduced, my name is Navesh Gavinder. I'm the COO at Safia. Uh, I've spent the last 10 years of my career in green economy. Uh, I started off uh, 10 years ago working um, to set up a green tech incubator here in, in South Africa. Uh, it's called the Climate Innovation Center based in Gauteng. Uh, I then moved my career along to policy uh, where I worked at the Department of Energy writing renewable energy policy and solar PV uh, policy specifically. Uh, and the last four years of my life uh, or my career, I worked at the South African Photovoltaic Industry Association, initially as a program manager responsible for small scale embedded generation and now the COO uh, responsible for the operations of the association. The association itself is a non-for-profit industry association. Uh, we currently represent 400 companies across the value chain of solar PV in South Africa. Uh, and these are utility scale IPPs, developers, manufacturers, uh, residential installation companies, CNI installation companies, EPCs, uh, finance houses, consultants across the full value chain of solar PV. Um, Sapia is uh, in its 10th year of existence. So we are celebrating 10 years of, of existence. Uh, and I think I'll leave it there for now. Excellent. So I think uh, that's a quite uh, important organization that you were talking about for South Africa, for sure, but definitely Southern Africa and the whole of Africa. So how would you say the organization has been pivotal in the development of solar in the, uh, in the region? Yeah, I think that's a good, uh, good question. So SAPIA has been formed uh, 10 years ago. Uh, it was instrumental in developing renewable energy policy in South Africa 10 years ago. So 10 years ago, go back 10 years, South Africa had uh, no renewable energy. Uh, the energy mix didn't uh, include renewable energy. Uh, there were no policy papers that supported renewable energy. We had six individuals uh, or industry players that came together to form the association and to lobby government to include renewable energy in its, uh, in its uh, policy plans. Um, and they were successful in doing that. So in 2010, we had an integrated resource plan that mapped out the energy mix of South Africa and at that point included renewable energy. Uh, and we saw just over about 20,000 megawatts of renewable energy being included in that plan for, for up until 2030. Uh, 8,400 of those megawatts were allocated forward of PV um, and just under 5,000 megawatts of renewable energy uh, in total. Uh, we now have a new integrated resource plan. So the, the core function of the association is to, to do policy advocacy and lobbying, uh, which we've done in the past and we continue to do. We have a new IRP uh, that now dictates the new vision until 2030 which still includes the, the bulk share of renewable energy. So we see about 28,000 megawatts of renewable energy being planned uh, over the next 10 years in South Africa. 6,000 of that allocated to utility scale solar PV, uh, another 6,000 allocated to distributed generation or embedded generation, which would be majority solar PV um, in those 10 years. Okay, excellent. So you're talking about a fairly important initiative here, and the RIP I know drives the uh, the uh, 
the, uh, the power market, the, uh, the energy sector in the, uh, in the country. But to deliver that, so those, uh, those 6,000, 60 gigawatts of solar, you know, by 2030, I think, or, or maybe more, that, that's what I've heard. So you definitely need people, you need skills to, to, de to deliver that. And I was quite interested because very recently, so uh, Sabia has launched a digital solar training, which I believe is part of a much wider program. And I was wondering whether you can tell us uh, why now, what's special about it? What about this program uh, that uh, I referred to? Good. Uh, thank you for that question, uh, Tony. Uh, I just want to be clear up front that SAPIA itself as an association has not launched the digital training. Uh, we do have a number of training partners, so training institutions who do the training, um, who undertake uh, solar PV training in the country, and they, uh, through them we've developed this, this digital training. So the Solar Training Center is the, the partner that has actually digitalized the training training program or the training that we have facilitated or, or developed. Um, and we expect that other training centers will follow suit uh, fairly quickly. Uh, so skills development, having said that, skills development has been at uh, the forefront of the association's agenda since inception. The association took six, six years actually uh, with the partners and uh, get a national curriculum registered and in place in South Africa for solar PV uh, service technicians. And this, um, this qualification was created in such a way that it provided a career path uh, for a school leaver. So someone leaving matric would have a career path in terms of becoming a solar PV mounter. So just talking. Um, Nivesh, um... I know obviously to deliver the program that you mentioned about the six gear out of solar. So we need skills and we need people to do that. And I heard that Sabia is launching a digital solar training, but it is part of a much wider program. And I'll be quite interested to know why now, what's special about that digital training? And also what is that wider program that I'm referring to? Good. Thank you for that question, Tony. Uh, just to be clear, uh, SAPIA as an association has not launched the digital training. Uh, we have a number of partners who are training centers uh, to undertake the PV training here in South Africa that we have managed to facilitate and develop. Um, the Solar Training Center is the partner that has actually digitalized the, the training program and the content. Um, and we expect that many other training centers will follow suit uh, very shortly. Uh, just in terms of uh, skills development. Uh, this has been at the forefront of the association's agenda since inception. Uh, it took the association with a number of partners uh, almost six years to get a national curriculum in place for solar PV. And the national curriculum was developed in such a way that it provided school leavers uh, a career parting opportunity. So if you left uh, matric, you would be able to uh, have part qualifications building up to this full qualification. The first part qualification is the mechanical mounting of structures. Uh, so it's purely mechanical. The second part qualification then brings in the wiring aspects of installation. And this is applicable to small scale embedded generation uh, installation, rooftop uh, installations. We then go into design factors. So then the third part qualification allows you to design utility scale. So it's a lot bigger in terms of EPC uh, um, skills. And then the last part qualification is the full service technician. So it allows you to develop a, a project, maintain and operate that project as well. So it was very well thought of and uh, is now in place in South Africa. Um, this qualification is a two year NQF level five qualification. We've seen the market move in South Africa from utility scale builds to more embedded generation builds. So a lot, a lot more projects, but a lot smaller projects. And we had to be responsible and sustainable uh, in the way we did skills development around this. And we had to uh, look at a program that, that required not just skills development, but quality of installation and safety of those installations. So we are sustainable in moving this, um, the sector forward. So in 2017, uh, the association launched a quality mechanism program called PB Green Card. 
The PV Green Card program is fundamentally based on four key principles. The one being skills development, so you have a skilled or suitably skilled workforce to undertake the work. The second part being accreditation, so accreditation of the persons who are doing the installation and the companies who are doing the installation. So consumers who require the service uh, have a database to go to. Uh, the third part is standardization. So we wanted to standardize the way these installations were done. South Africa had, at that time did not have standards in place. Uh, by the way, we still don't have standards in place to, to do these installations. Um, and we thought we needed to standardize the practices so we could actually uh, know what was good installation and what were not. And the fourth part is the documentation of the installation. We saw a lot of the installations going up, but there were no documentation of what components were used, uh, what uh, standards were followed, what principles were guided, uh, and it left consumers in a space that didn't understand if they needed to fix something, where to go. So we thought documentation of that system was, was uh, fairly critical. Uh, and that's the PV Green Card program in a nutshell. We do have a website, www.pvgreencard.co.za, where you can get full information on the program. Uh, and just in terms of the achievements to date, through the program over the last two years, we've trained over 800 uh, young South Africans to be able uh, to do solar PV installations. We've tested and assessed more than 300 of them uh, with an 80% pass rate uh, of, of installers. And we have, I think, about 300 companies uh, registered to the program. So the question you asked is why now? Right. Uh, so with the fourth uh, industrial revolution and the Internet of Things, online training is becoming a thing. It's becoming more popular. People are appreciating it more. You can do it in your own time. Uh, it's just more convenient for people. Given the COVID impact over the last five or six months, extraordinary circumstances require extraordinary measures. So this, I think, has forced us to move quicker than expected on getting this training online. Okay, excellent. That's fine. So, a uh, question that relates directly to what you said. So, moving in the di digital platform, which is great. So, how would you show the same quality standards that you were that you've been delivering so far? Yeah, it, it's a difficult question, right? So, uh, we've trained through the program. Uh, I think now sitting on about twenty-four training institutions. Uh, to offer or deliver this training. Uh, and uh, managing the quality of each of these training centers is a, is a problematic task on its own. Uh, now moving it online has its own uh, problems or challenges, but I, I think the, the training is developed in such a way that it is easy to deliver and it's easy to, to digest for participants, right? Uh, the training has a theoretical and a practical component. The majority is a, a theoretical component, so a lot of so the the entire theoretical component can be digitalized very easily. The part that we we struggle a little bit on is the practical component. We do like installers uh, to feel the components, to have touch of the components, and get comfortable with it. So even though we digitalized or we've digitalized the the theoretical part, there's still an opportunity for participants to go into a workshop uh, and play around with the demonstration facility. So that has not been taken away. It, it will be done under strict COVID uh, protocols, uh, but we still encourage uh, participants to go in and, and, and feel the technology when they go into the training. Excellent, excellent. So what has been the industry reception so far? Yeah, it's an interesting question, right? So it, this was the first digital training that we had launched. It was in June. Uh, it was piloted with 14 participants to see how the industry would react. Uh, I, 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 can, I can tell you that it has been only positive reviews that I've received to date. I've not received any negative reviews on it. Um, and as soon as we do, we'll, we will, we'll share those negative reviews so we can always uh, embed the program to ensure that we are um, meeting the expectation and the needs of the industry. So we have seen a great response. Uh, making And online training makes skills development more accessible. And it's something we've been struggling with for a long time, is how do we get these skills to the, be to the people who really require these skills, right? And I think online 
um, training allows us to, to, uh, to get the training more accessible. Uh, and I think we're going to see a lot more innovative training solutions. Uh, so given the, the circumstance of COVID-19, it's pushing people into new business models. It's pushing training centers, schools, universities into new models of how you teach and how you train. Uh, and I think that this is going to allow uh, fresh faces, fresh minds, uh, new dimensions, innovation in the space of training. Excellent. That's great. And, and you're right. So uh, looking at where we are with COVID, so we have to innovate and, 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 and to carry on the work. The work is still there and still needs to be uh, performed. So my last question for you is, you had uh, your first pilot session with 14 people, 14 candidates. Uh, when are the next one? And that's number <laughs> one. And two, so are they going to be from all over Africa? So let me, let me answer the easy question. <laughs> The next dates are planned. Uh, I mentioned the website, www.pbgreencard.co.za. There is a tab that says training and assessment. It gives you the full list of upcoming trainings, whether they be the online trainings or the in-house trainings, the workshop trainings. Uh, participants are welcome to go on there. They will see all of the dates. They will have, uh, we, we, we just have a platform to facilitate the interaction of participants and training centers. When you go on there and you click on any of those trainings that you're interested in, you will be diverted directly to the training institution. Uh, and they will give you the pricing of training, the duration of training, uh, the requirements for training, uh, and all of the information you require to undertake that training. So the website is up and running. The dates are on there. It's updated very frequently, so everyone has access to that. Uh, the African component uh, is a difficult question. So the training was developed uh, very particularly for the South African conditions. And as you would understand, every country has their own nuances and conditions that are applicable to their uh, electrical systems, their, their energy planners, uh, the municipalities, the distributors. The energy systems are different. So connecting to those energy systems are different. So there's technical components that have to be tailored to the country for, for the training to work. We are working with other African uh, industry associations uh, to, to try to move the skills development uh, learnings that we've had in South Africa to the African countries. Uh, we would like to partner with the association so they roll it out uh, and localize it for those countries. Uh, and I think that's very important to us. We do also have trainers or training centers on our database that are doing uh, training in Africa. Uh, so there is a green, green Academy that we have that has uh, training centers, I think, in seven countries in, in Africa. Uh, and their dates are also available on our website. Excellent. That's great. So uh, thank you very much for having a go. I know it wasn't a, an easy question, but uh, you've answered that uh, very well. So Nivesh, so that was a, a, brilliant, uh, a, a brilliant conversation with you. So we've learned a lot. So we are very pleased to know that uh, about these... Uh, uh, a PV green card uh, program that you launch, and also the digital uh, solar training, which we believe we clearly uh, shift the uh, um, scale uh, uh, implementations here uh, uh, in the continent. So uh, thank you very much for doing that. Thank you as well for the fantastic work that Savia is doing, and you at the helm of it, uh, uh, ma managing it or sort of sharing the effort, the collective effort, because I know that the collective is very important for you. All that is left for me to say is uh, thank you very much. So at Renewables in Africa, so we are here to support you as well. So if there is anything, you know, you can count on us. So th thank you for today. Thank you for having me. Pleasure.